If you have ever tried to capture macro shots of a bee or a butterfly, then you likely know that insects make for challenging subjects. They flit, flee and fly as fast as possible whenever you get close enough to take a shot. But with the right techniques, you can capture stunning macro photos by tomorrow. But how do you do that? Let's go find out. Tip number one is to find a good hotspot for photographing insects. A good spot for photographing insects can last for years. Insects are attracted to flowers and other plants, so look for areas with a variety of these. Insects are also attracted to water, so look out for areas with ponds, streams or other bodies of water. Tip number two is to use a flash or a ring light. When you get close to an insect, the natural light may not be enough to illuminate the entire subject. Using a flash can help you fill in the shadows and create a more evenly lit image. But that's not the only reason. Insects are often very fast moving, so using a flash can help you freeze the motion and capture them in sharp focus. One of the lesser mentioned but essential reasons for using a flash is that it brings out the fine details and textures of the insects that you're trying to capture. However, there are also some potential downsides for using a flash for macro photography. It can be harsh if you use the flash too close to a subject or at too high a flash output setting. It can create these awful shadows and increase the reflections and in general make your photo look bad and unnat unnatural. Also, it can be very distracting. If the flash is too powerful, it can distract the insect and make it move away. Now, it can be a little difficult to use flash effectively in macro photography, as you need to be careful not to overexpose your photos and create these awful shadows. So, use a diffuser, as it helps you soften the light, thermal flash, and reduce the harsh shadows. Experiment a bit with the different flash output settings to find the right balance between brightness and hardness. I personally find that once the flash is close to a subject, you only need like 1 16th of the output power or less. The less flash output, the faster the light also is. So it can get as short as 1 20th of a second or even less. That is much faster than your camera is capable of. Tip number three is to use manual mode. With a flash, your shutter speed will be locked to 1 200th of a second or close to it, depending on your camera. Now, you will have a very shallow depth of field at macro distance, so you want to control the aperture to change the portion of the image that will be in focus. So the aperture will likely be in the range of f8 or up to f13 or something thereabout. This leaves us with the ISO, which I use to control the brightness of the background. So this is one of the rare occasions where I actually switch off auto ISO. So raise the ISO to brighten the background as it will allow more natural light to reach the camera sensor. If you instead lower the ISO, you'll get a darker background as less light gets to reach the sensor. All right, let's move on to tip number three and a half. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button as it lets YouTube know that you find it valuable so they can re recommend it to others. So let's move on to tip number four, and that is shoot handheld. When you shoot handheld, you have the freedom to move around and adjust your composition as needed. This is especially helpful when you're trying to capture insects that are moving around and moving quickly. So if I was using a tripod here, I would be very frustrated. And once I would get the tripod into position, it would it would have already gone to another place. You might also brush the tripod against a branch or some leaves that will scare your subject or just make everything move in the frame. Tip number five is to use manual focus. When you're shooting macro photos, I usually find it much easier to use manual focus. This will allow you to ensure that your subject is in sharp focus. The eyes are usually the most important part of a macro subject. So it's a good idea to start by focusing on them. When you're focusing manually, it's a good idea to use a single point focus. This will help you to focus on a specific area of the image instead of leaving the control to the camera. So 
Move the camera back and forth very slightly and fire a burst of shots when the subject comes into focus. Tip number six is to shoot at the right time of the day. If you think about it, insects are very alert and active. They're <laughs> incredible fast. And when the scene is only like uh, 3.6 uh, centimeters on a full frame camera, it doesn't take much movement from your subject before it becomes blurred. There's an important trick to macro photography of insects, and this is timing. Midday macro photography of flying insects is frustrating even the, with the fastest techniques. If you go out to shoot macro photography early in the morning, then you have a chance to find insects before they are warmed up by the sun. Unlike us and mammals, insects are cold blooded. While they're sluggish and unresponsive, you can get extremely close without them darting away from you. Ideally, you should start your day right as the sun begins to rise. That way you will maximize the amount of time you have with the insects being sluggish and uh, calm. So let's move on to tip number seven. Insects are small and easily startled. Hopefully I can get a shot or two of it. Ah, damn. So it's important to be a little bit stealthy when approaching them if you want to get close enough to take good photos. That is, if you don't get out early in the morning or you prefer to shoot at midday but in the shadows. If you make too much noise or move too quickly, the insects is likely to fly away or hide. So be patient. It may take some time to get close enough to the insect to take a good photo. So if you don't rush the process, you'll have more success. With a little practice, you'll be able to take amazing photos that capture the beauty of these tiny creatures. Your photos will only be as good as your technique and as sharp as the lens you use for macro photography. One of the lenses I use is the Nikon Z105 macro lens and it's an incredible lens. But there's also a thing about it that's really annoying. So take a look for yourself in this video up here. See you over there.